Thank you, Lisa. So I'm actually excited to really hop on here and share something that's been on my heart and what I've been focusing on and something I've had to revisit a few times my journey. So I am Natasha. I'm a diamond ambassador. I just had my nine-year plexiversary two days ago. <laughs> and I always have to count because I'm like, how long has it been? How long has it been? And it's so funny because like people will ask me, how, how long are you going to do plexus? Are you going to do plexus forever? And I'm like, I'm going to be drinking pink drinks when I'm 90. It's just part of it. <laughs> and if you know, you know, like it just, it's going to stick. So, uh, but being on this journey for so long, you kind of learn that it is a journey, a road and a valley of, of highs and lows and ups and downs. And that is okay because there is not a single business owner in this world that has just started something and skyrocketed and has not faced a hiccup or a bump in the road or has some challenges. And so doing this for so long, there are, there are so many different like points I can think of, but times that I've really had to sit down and refocus and think about my why and what I'm doing, because I can tell you, there's been times that I might go a year and just be in management mode or checking the boxes. Like, you know what I mean? You're like, okay, I got to get a post up. I got to check in with my team. I got to check in with my customers. But you all, I'm telling you, there is a difference in digging deep and knowing your why and then showing up versus just checking off the boxes. Because I've had people tell me, you're so passionate. I couldn't do what you do. Or <laughs> um, you're so confident. And then there's times that I'm like, okay, like I'm just going to be so freaking vulnerable with you on this call. There's times I'm like, am I a poser? I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do. Life is crazy. I'm not showing up as my best self, but I'm doing it anyways. People can kind of read through that. And so I figured like, let's revisit our why. So when I joined my husband and I, my why in the beginning, <laughs> so vulnerable here, we got married in the courthouse and I never had a wedding. So when I first joined, I was like, oh, I want to make $10,000 and have a real wedding. Okay. Y'all, then the money started rolling in. I was like, I'm not wasting my money on a wedding. Like we love each other. And I have friends that have had over the top immaculate weddings that are divorced. And I'm like, well, we've been together for eternity. It feels like, and we're rocking just fine. So we didn't need that wedding. And then, so when I joined my why was just that. And then I, I, I have had a quick journey in the beginning. And then it got to a point that I was kind of regressing. I went Emerald in less than a year, super fast. Didn't really know what I was doing, but I was like, I got this. Like I'm a people person. I can help, but I'm, I'm, I'm not the most organized. That's where my leader and I compliment each other. Okay. I can either bring the fun one and she's the one that's like got the list and doing all the, <laughs> um, behind the scenes work. So we work well together. So I will compliment her on that. But when I went backwards, I read the book and, and I took a lot of notes actually at convention because I'm rereading it. Get over your damn self. I hate to say that, but, and it's so basic and y'all, it's like, we need, we know we need to know our why we know we need to have a vision. We know all the things, but the book will cause you to cause you to dig a little bit deeper than that. So if you've not read it, do it. So the very first time I read it, I was at like 700 points, not holding Emerald, so defeated. And so my why shifted. Like my why was like, okay, I want to save our family. I want to get us out of this hole that we're in. Um, I did not come for money. I was never taught how to manage money or any of those things. And so I've always kind of been like the pioneer of figuring things out. And in this business, you just got to figure it out. So I want to talk about the business and why people fail, or maybe you're not, you're not feeling like you're failing, but you're at a place that you just feel like you're checking off the boxes, or maybe you're in a crazy busy season of life that you're like, I know I need to show up. I know, I know, I know I need to be doing X, Y, and Z, but then the day's getting by you and you're not. So then it's like causing anxiety. And then you're like five days out and you're like, I've not done any of the things that I needed to do. Okay. I know we've all had had to have been there. Or you're like, I know I need to be working my business, but I'm not. And then you go back and look at your Facebook and you're like, I've not posted in a month. It's kind of just 
it's kind of just a cycle, you know? So here are just, I'm going to highlight quickly reasons that people fail. First of all, they're not coachable. So if someone's not seeing success, they're probably not following the system of the leaders above them. And there is no one that comes into social selling, network marketing that knows what they're doing. Like you just don't, it's trial and error, figuring it out. So trust your leaders. They know what to do because the way I was running my business 10 years ago would never work today. Things are evolving and changing. So trust them, trust the process, take advantage of their events, their group chats, plug into the resources and then commit to being coachable, like declare it, just say, okay, let me ch check back in with my coach or I don't want to say coach, my friend that brought me onto this journey. Like, let me tell her where I'm at and, and like, let them guide you through this and get back into action. Like truly just get back to doing the small things. Reason number two, you're not treating this like a business. So of course we've heard it a million times. The people that aren't treating it like a business are going to get paid like a hobby. So if you're, if you're treating your business like a hobby, you're going to get paid like it's a hobby. And, and maybe that's just what you want out of this business and that's okay. But my whole call and point is like, I really just want each of us to be able to dream again. Like, although we're adults and you know, the younger kids are the ones that are dreaming, like it's okay for us to dream again too. And know that there is no greater industry than social selling. Even if I was on a plexus and it disappeared, with it, which that's never going to happen. I told you I'm going to be drinking peat drinks when I'm 90. I would do social selling because there's nothing else you can go do that you're helping people. Mom, you're done. Okay, go tell daddy. Okay, go tell daddy. Um, sorry, I told you all this was going to happen. So, um sorry, this is just real life. Working from home is really freaking hard, but they're treating it like a hobby. You're not committing. You're not trusting the process of dreaming, going all in and really just like, like fully diving in into like the whole network marketing and social selling. Change his diaper. He, he needs a diaper change. Sorry. That's where we're at. Um, so yes, whatever I was saying, so sorry. <laughs> um let me revisit okay and then reason number three is you're not willing to get uncomfortable no one is coming into this knowing what to do it's hard sometimes like for instance when I haven't like been putting myself out there having conversations about plexus y'all I'm a diamond and I'm like okay gotta get back out there like I've not been bold I've not been sharing about it it's like so I'm like okay I'm gonna get uncomfortable and I'm gonna revisit those things and so Getting uncomfortable and stepping out of, outside of your comfort zone is going to be a part of, of getting to the next level. And then reason number four is you're just not hungry enough. Life happens to every single one of us. And, and all of these factors are going to play into what I'm about to talk about um, and really like fill into your why. But you're just, you don't see the true picture of like what this opportunity can give you. And you're not dreaming. You're not viewing it as a true, like real opportunity. And it's not giving you that drive to really want to go all in. And that's okay because it's scary. It's intimidating. And so many people are skeptical. Like I went into Plex as being skeptical. And so really just having that hunger and I'm not, I'm not suggesting that like you have to be at your wits end or at this place of desperation to like revisit why you're doing plexus and all the things, but just to know like why you're doing this, what you're doing here and where you're going. Cause it's a journey and it's a roadmap and that's what we're on. So, um, I know you've heard people are like, what is your why? It should make you want to cry. Okay, that's what we heard in the beginning, like 10 years ago. I don't think your why should make you want to cry, but your why should fuel you enough that it's helping you be consistent and show up daily because that's the hardest part, right? We have to just show up and be consistent what we're doing. And this is what consistency might look like for you. If you're working and you're just getting into this, and like I just had a conversation with one of my girls 
And being consistent to her, and she's someone that I know is going to be a rock star. And so I just have to meet her where, where she's at. But being consistent to her is going to be posting one time a week about Plexus. So be consistent in that. Like if you just want to post one time, let that be that. Or three or five. But whatever you're doing, do it continuously because people see that. I don't know if it's happened to you, but I have had people that are my friends that I know 100% without a doubt would join me if they decided to plexus and then they go and join someone else. <laughs> and those are the times and seasons that I've probably fallen off social media. So just commit to being consistent. So your why, you should be able to see it, smell it, visualize it. Like you should know what you're wanting out of plexus. And like moms, women, we are wired to help people. So your why, like hold your breath here, cannot be about your kids or your husband. Like it truly has to be about you. It has to be about something that you want deep down inside. Like it can't just be like, I want to do plexus to make more money. Like, no, y'all, that is not going to make you show up every single day and do the things. Like it's just not, but it can be about what money is going to do for you. So maybe it's a mom that's like wanting to make more money. I would say, okay, why do you want to make more money? And she can say, and I'm just going to give y'all examples. Um, I want to make more money so I can stay at home with my kids. Well, why do you want to stay at home with your kids? Um, maybe it's because like her family or mom wasn't around a lot. And she like, maybe there's a reason why. And so it's like, peel back those layers. Like maybe it's a mom that's wanting to take the financial burden off of her husband and like wanting him home more. So maybe it's like, okay, my wise, I want to make more money so that my husband can be at home more. We can do more things as a family. And like, he's not missing out on my child's um, childhood. Like peel back the layers. And those are just like a couple examples. And I'll just throw them off the top of my head. But you have to really know like why you are doing this. It cannot be surface level or you're kind of just going to do what I said in the beginning. You're just going to be checking all the boxes, showing up. You're not talking to anyone specifically. You're not connecting emotionally. Because also, when you know your why, you're talking to specific people. Like, I am targeting moms that are just like me, that I can connect with, that are in a crazy season of life. And I know we're all, like, so busy. But y'all, the most successful people are the ones that are the busiest. Because we know how to get stuff done. We're already trucking and we're moving 100 miles an hour. So those are going to be the ones that are the most successful. So think about that. Think about what your why is. And that's one of the things I want you to take away tonight. Um, is to like spend time like truly thinking about it. And, and your why has probably shifted from the time that you joined in the very, very beginning. And it could be for the community to help others because like I did a coaching call the other day with or like a leader's round table. And y'all, that call right there fired me up more than anything. Cause I had heard like three or four different people's story. One girl, if y'all are on here, I will not name names, um, is going through a divorce. Had no idea. My jaw dropped. Um, another girl's wanting to move out and get her own apartment. Like there's, there are deeper reasons to that, but to know that y'all that's fueled me as a leader because I'm like, okay, like I'm going to show up every day to help X, Y, and Z because I know I'm helping them. So know your why and figure out your team's why. And then with your why comes your goals. Because that's, that's the whole point, right? We have a goal that we're trying to get to. And so knowing your why is going to help you attain your goals. You got to know where you're going, why you're going there, who's going with you, like what the purpose is on the journey. So what do you want to accomplish? When do you want to accomplish it and why? So your goal just can't be, I want to get to Diamond or I want to make $10,000. It's a roadmap. Like think about being in the mall and you're like, see the little X and then you're going somewhere else. You got to go down the escalator, up the escalator, get on the elevator, go down this hall. Think of your business the same exact way. So if you want to get to, let's just say Ruby by the end of the year, um, make your goal of, like a hundred point growth within a month, because that's going to project you um, and shift your mindset into like, okay, if I want to get a hundred points within a month, 
I know that I can't do it by myself. So the focus is going to shift for you because you're going to be like, okay, I need to get two silvers. I need to get a handful of customers back on board, revisiting their health goals. So when you break it down and you, you're like creating a breakdown of how many points you need, where you need to go, it's going to become so much more attainable and dive into the comp plan. Know that, because I do this, I've done this a lot. Like people are like, okay, I want to go enrolled by whatever. And I'm like, okay, that's in six months. Like, what are we going to do to get there? Um, and so your goals have to align with your activity and what you're wanting to do. So spend time with your why and your vision and think about where you want to be and, and be vulnerable with yourself. Like look at your back office, look at your numbers, think about how much time and work you're wanting to commit and think about like your activity. Are you showing up? I also think being real, a little bit realistic, but also setting the big crazy goals. Because when I set the big crazy goals, um, I like show up bigger and better. <laughs> so push yourselves and and know that everything that you want is left up to you and that you can change the like trajectory of your business. And whenever I read this book the first time and changed my my like mindset and my why, I signed 72 customers within three months and like my business was like, and I, and I had to like, let go of like, I don't have any leaders. Like no one's showing up. Blah, blah. I was like, okay, that's it. I'm done having a pity party. And I was, it was during a leaders retreat contest. And I remember being like, I need 29 people um, to earn whatever. And I had like a week left <sighs> y'all that, that week. I showed up bigger and better and was more bold than ever, but I took off and the following year, I was the first jewel to rank Sapphire and Diamond in the same month. And so truly knowing why you're doing something and where you're going and having a plan is going to make you skyrocket. And so that's why I always like love talking about this because it's like, if somebody doesn't know their why, and there's a couple of girls that I love on my team, but I'm like, I can never, ever, ever get their wild of them. And I think those are the people that just like aren't being vulnerable with themselves, aren't giving themselves the opportunity to dream or because, you know, none of us want to fail, but that's part of it. Like that really is like, there are some goals. Oh, and I will say this, the month before I went Sapphire and Diamond, I missed Sapphire in February by five points. I sold probably for like 10 days, like cried through a pity party, went a little MIA because I was just devastated. I had like reached Emerald so fast, fallen back, and then to like be five points away. So failure is part of it, but it made me a much better leader because at the end of the day, it's not about me. So dig deep, know your why, know your vision, know where you're going and do that with your team because you can't get to the top by yourself. You can't change like your lifestyle if you're not doing that and I always tell my team this is another one thing if you look outward and you focus outward and stop like like we have to know our numbers our points where we're at but if we stop focusing on that every single day like me 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 and start thinking okay like I need to help three people get silver I need to help Sally get back to senior silver I need to help these three girls re-rank gold by doing all those little things you're going to grow and it's going to create such a great team culture community and like fun like it's going to help your team get back in momentum because doing this business isn't fun doing it by yourself anyways so those are my takeaways dig into the comp plan if you don't know it like truly because you got to know how many points you're getting like the six five four all of that because sometimes you just got to like look at the basics know the comp plan figure out your why like it doesn't have to make you cry but you have to have a little bit of meat in there and then envision where do you want to be when do you want to hit that goal and how are you going to get there like there has to be a, a time frame you can't just say when because like what do they say uh dream without a plan is just a wish or something I don't know you have to break it down and I'm a numbers and type of girl. I love that stuff. But 
Does anyone have any questions? Oh, and with the vision thing, um, create the vision boards or one thing that I did is if I had a goal and I knew I needed 50 people or a hundred or whatever, I would make the background on my phone that number. And then every day I was so eager, like literally could not wait to move the number. And so create some type of visual. Maybe it's the post-it notes on the wall. Maybe it's a vision board. Maybe it's the background on your phone, but also create some type of visual for you. Because when you write your goals down, if you see your vision, if you know what you're working for, like that is going to help like tremendously as well. Lisa, you got something to say? You know, I do. <laughs> I know. I see your mic came off. I know. So guys, I was telling somebody, she was talking about the comp plan. And um, if you don't talk about the comp plan to your potentials, it's kind of like them going on a job interview and never knowing how, like if you're like, if you have a, a, a VIP customer, right. Or even a brand ambassador and they don't know the comp plan, it's like, they've been on a job interview and they don't even know how much they're going to get paid. Like, like what, like you've got to talk about the comp plan and you got to share about the comp plan. Everybody needs margin in their, in their budget. I remember at a time where I could barely feed my children and I was so desperate to, to, to make it work. That's how I work. I work to where I'm like, okay, I don't ever want to be in that spot again. Right. And so I always think back about that when I don't want to get busy. I'm like, okay, I got to feed my kids. Not literally because they're grown, but I'm like, okay, I got to feed my kids. I mean, that mentality, right? So that's just where I'm at. And um, surround yourself with like-minded people. Like if someone's running on your team, because I've had this happen, I've worked with level like threes for like a year and then their leaders fall off and now they're my level ones. Um, so focus on your upper levels, but also when I've had my big seasons of growth, it's been silent. It's like, look at all the people that are showing up here. Maybe you don't have people on your team yet that are really working, but team up with someone else that's silver or senior silver and they're wanting to grow because you're going to hold each other accountable. And I mean, me, me and Lisa do that. We're not even on the same team, but we'll have like conversations um, for hours about what we're doing, what's working, what's not working. Because when you're surround, when, when you're putting yourself in an environment of people that have goals and know where they're going and are showing up Bailey, you're going to do the same thing. And then with vision casting, my one's not here on here, but she's because she's on vacation. <laughs> Um, but she always cast vision on me when I did not see it. I didn't even write that down to discuss today, but she would always tell me what she saw in me. She would always tell me she saw me as a jewel. She always told me the things that she saw that Plexus would do for me. And so that's great as well, because a lot of the times when people don't believe in themselves and they have other people that are believing for like believing in them and see a vision for them, uh, they, they kind of believe that and adapt that. Like if she told me I was a rock star, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm not really a rock star today. I, I need to like show up and do something. Uh, so people want to live up to those expe expectations as well of what you see in them. And it's yep. nice to hear. Someone was saying, is there a good comp plan video? Honestly, the, or if you're using the Go app, go in there. There's some great videos that are in there and it kind of chunks it out in nuggets. Um, you know, and honestly, have a call, sit down and have a call and break it down in nuggets. You don't have to go all the way to like the diamond or the jewel stuff. Start with simple. You don't want to overwhelm them. You give them too much information. So that's where I would start. And then old school, we used to watch diamond documentaries all the time. Uh, whenever I wanted to just see that there were like so many other people that are like me watching those were always good for me as well. And I know they're not like as easy to get to. <laughs> like, I'm just going to say that, um, but they are on the recognition page. So go check out some of the, re 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 the videos that they posted in the go app from convention. There's yeah, a lot of, there's good. a lot of those in there too. So we're just about out of time. And Natasha, do you want, are you going to do a giveaway? Uh, yes, okay. I will do a giveaway. Do you, do I just pick a number? Whatever you want to do, however you want to do it. Can I just, you, however you want to do it, ask a question, pick a number, however. Okay. Okay. Like, let's do that really quick. Okay. Uh, maybe, okay. As quick as possible, write one reason that like, why was your why in starting Plexus? Regardless of it was the products, uh, to help people, to be a part of a community, to make money. 
just put a little something over there and then I will pick a number here in a minute and have Lisa, Lisa count. I'll give y'all like a minute and then we'll do it. That way we're still done in time. Oh, someone said they wanted their life back. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Well, one of my, one of my whys while y'all sharing that is like my mom, because she's a single mom. And like, I still to this day, I'm like, I'm going to build like a house behind us or something and I'm going to take care of her forever. And so, uh, I mean, it's truly things that do touch you that make you do want to like show up every day. And so I know that's about another person, but there, if I wanted to get vulnerable, I could pull back the layers of all those reasons why. That's something I want to do. Okay, Lisa, I'm going to, how about number eight? Count to see. Okay. Who One, two, was. three, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight. Tina Modrill. Okay. Tina Modrill. Yay. Yep. She's the winner. Okay. We're Facebook friends. So I, I'm pretty <laughs> sure we're Facebook friends. Um, I will send you a message and get your address and then I will 